Hello and welcome to YouTube channel Health Q, the place where our mission is to not only motivate you but help you to move on to the brighter side of the health. In today's video, I would be explaining why few people are unable to raise their eyebrows when they have delayed recovery in facial paralysis. Yes, there are many patients who after completing 3 months, 4 months, 6 months and even sometimes years are not able to raise their eyebrows. So I am going to share with you the reason behind this. So if you are interested in knowing that, make sure to watch this video till the end. Let's begin. Hello friends, I am physiotherapist Meghna Dave, founder and CEO of HealthQ Rehab, a company that focuses on helping you move better. We provide online as well as offline physio rehab services to various movement related disorders. And one such service that we do provide is facial rehabilitation. Now we see a lot of facial rehabilitation cases on a daily basis. And one important concern that a lot of patients have is they find it difficult to raise their eyebrows. Now what is the reason behind this? Well, your facial nerve is a nerve which starts from your brain, passes to your ear and then branches out in five branches. Now out of this one branch is your frontal branch or is the branch that supplies the frontalis muscle. Frontalis muscle is a muscle which is responsible for raising of your eyebrows. Now many a times this nerve branch itself has got delayed recovery or as you can say it takes a little longer for the impulses to reach back there. In those scenarios, the patient will have weakness in the frontalis muscle due to which they will find difficult to raise their eyebrows. This is not the case always. There are some times where due to tightness of the eyelid muscle, there is a constant pull of this frontalis muscle in downward direction. At the same time, the opposite group of muscle for frontalis which is the eyebrow raised muscle is the muscles around the eyebrows which is responsible for your frowning action. This muscle is procarius as well as corrugator supercilia. So these are the opposing group of muscle. So whenever any movement has to happen, one group of muscle has to contract and the other group of muscle has to relax. Many a times in the long standing cases of Bell's palsy, what happens is there is constant over contraction of procarius and corrugator supercilia muscle due to which the frontalis is not able to exert the level of power uh, that is equivalent or more than the power or force that is being felt around the eyebrow region. Due to this, the patient find difficulty to raise the eyebrows. In all three scenarios, the management will be different. For example, let's say if frontalis is weak itself. This would be seen in the initial phases of Bell's palsy where the nerve has not recovered completely. The weakness would be more. Here, it's not a good idea to force this uh, muscle to raise up. Many a times I've seen patients, they try to raise their eyebrows forcefully and hold. This will increase the risk of synchinesis. Eventually, what you need to do at this time, you just need to maintain the mobility of the facial muscles. Since facial muscles are not like skeletal muscles of other body, which are connected to the bone, very simple passive movement also will cause contraction. In the initial phase of Bell's palsy, all you need to do is to maintain blood circulation in that area, to maintain adequate lymphatic drainage in the area. You should not focus on strength development because eventually as the nerve heals, the strength will come back. So focus more on massages, less on exercise and if you still want to do exercise, just do passive movements. That's it. Don't force these muscles to go up higher. That will help to activate your facial muscle frontalis so that is number one number two if you feel that your this frowning muscles are overpowering and thus are not allowing the frontalis muscle to move all you need to do is you need to relax this muscle because sometimes due to constant stress this are overactive and all you need to do is just relax that so even gentle massage in midway in the gabular region and in the center region is a good way of relaxing this muscle and after doing this then you can give a gentle support of up and down and that would be eventually helpful for you to allow some frontalis movement and last but not the least is the tightness around the eyelids now this is seen in a chronic Bell's palsy case mostly a person who has developed synchinesis many a times people who suffer from synchinesis 
experience or observe that their eyelids feel smaller compared to the other side. In that scenario, it is important that constant stretches should be given. For this stretches to happen, what you need to do, you need to gradually stretch these muscles upward and then downward. You need to hold the stretch and then relax. Hold the stretch, relax. Hold the stretch, relax. Do it in the inner plane, in the mid plane and in the outer plane as well as in the inner plane here as well. With this, what you will do, you would be stretching the eyelids in a good way which will give a lot of flexibility to your eyelids as well as your eyebrows and will enable to an extent to encourage movement around the eyebrows. So these were the three ways with which the eyebrows can not lift and what can be done to raise this eyebrows. I hope you found this video helpful. If yes, make sure to like this video, share this video with your friends and family members and do not forget to subscribe to Health Q channel. I'll see you in another video. Thank you.